everyone, this is Joe Tortonesi. Welcome to Joe's Drum Shop, where we learn all about drums and music and putting it together to make a favorite song or a popular song. Today we're actually going to be working on a book. Um, it's basically called The Fast Track. Uh, in my other uh, TV shows, we actually had uh, be playing the book with basically learning the whole drum set, Le starting from learning how to play the bass drum and the snare drum and the crashes and doing the fills and all the sorts of different parts of the drum set. And then, of course, learning the notes to put them all together. Now we're actually into the second book. It's called Fast Track Drums One, Songbook One. Now we're actually going to be playing some famous songs. And the first one is actually from a band called The Kinks. Uh, back in the 60s, this band was around, and uh, they had a song called You Really Got Me, which later on Van Halen re-recorded on their first album. And so this is a really popular tune. Um, I'm going to break it down. We're going to go through the whole song individually with all the parts, and then I'm going to put it together at the end, and then we'll play it, and it'll be with the song. All right, first of all, what we're going to start with is a flam. So you remember... One of the rudiments of, uh, of drumming is the thing called a flam. Now, what a flam does is it's the left one down, the right one up, and we're going to hit the drum just like that so that the two sticks hit almost at the same time, but they're slightly off from each other, okay? So as they do, I'll play it once again. As you can see, it sounds a little slightly off, but that's because we want it to sound like that. Now, after that, there's a bass drum that comes in and then a crash with the bass drum. So let me play that for you right now. It's going to start like this. All right. And then we're going to go into a beat. Now, the beat's going to be the hi-hat will be open, slow, open, uh, opened up a little bit, and we're going to deal with... Just a little bit of a sizzle out of the hi-hat, kind of like that. And then the bass drum and the snare drum will sound like this. It's going to go one and two and three and four and. I'll play that again. One and two and three and four and. And that will continue throughout the whole song, okay? When we get up to the second half of the song, this is the part where we kind of break into just before the, the end of the first verse and we go into the second verse, there's a little bit of a fill. And again, we're going to be using some flams again. So it's going to start off with a crash. We're going to crash with the bass. And then we're going to flam. And then two more basses. And then another flam. Then we're going to go into ending one. Ending one shows a little bar going across with the number one, and that's going to be a repeat sign to go back to the beginning once we get done with that measure. So it's going to sound like this. Ending one is one, two, and three, and four, and. And then we're going to go back to the beat again, okay? Then we, as we go back to the beginning, you'll see the what, they, what I call like the... Uh, double bar, double dot. Remember on, on the uh, earlier book that we had, it was called Drums One. We did some patterns and then some songs that actually had double bar, double dot, which means that when you see that, you're going to go back to the beginning of that and play that whole section again so it doesn't have to be rewritten on another page. Again, to break down so that the song doesn't take four or five pages, it maybe only takes two. All right, so we're going to go back to that double bar, double dot. And we'll play the pattern again. It's going to sound like this. And then that'll continue throughout. When we get up to the first ending again, we're not going to play the first ending. There's a second ending. And that'll have the bar going across the top. And it'll have a number two by it. You'll see that. And as we get done with that, we're going to go right into what they call the next section of the song is called the guitar solo. This is where the guitar solo will play. And while it's playing, I'm going to switch over to the ride cymbal and not the hi-hat. So that way it'll change it up a little bit with, with the sound. Then when we get done with that, we're going to end with a little bit of a fill. We're going to come back to the hi-hat. 
and then we'll get back into one last time on page one, or in this case, it's on page uh, uh, three, and that will be the, the end of the song. Once we get done with page three, we'll go on to four, then we're going to get up to this thing called the coda sign, and the coda sign is like a little circle with a little crosshairs going through it. And that'll tell us to jump right to that, to the very bottom of the page. You'll see on the bottom right, it'll say coda, and it'll say outro. And basically all that is is just a crash with a snare and a bass. And you're going to do that four times. So it'll be like this. And that's basically the end of the song. So let's go ahead, and I'm going to play this through once without the music. I'm going to do it slow. And then we'll bring it up to speed and we'll play along with the song. So let's check this out. Right, that is the whole song in a nutshell. So I played it slow, I'm going to bring it up to speed, and we're going to play along with the track now. So here we go.
that's the song. That is by the Kinks, and you really got me. All right, we're going to try another song. This is the second song out of the book. It's called Fast Track. Uh, it's Drums One, Songbook One. Remember, now we're in. The last book that I was into is just called Drums One, and that was it. It's just basically a learning book to get you to learn how to read the drums, you know, learn how to uh, work on patterns and fills, uh, learn how to crash with the bass drum, and all sorts of different things to get you up and running to be able to play into this book. So you definitely don't want to jump into this book first if you haven't done Drums 1 yet. So that's definitely important to know. All right, the next one is called Wild Thing. And Wild Thing was done by a band called The Trogs. And this version of it here is kind of like a uh, little more rock than the original version. They didn't really write this one uh, for the, the original version. It was a little more for an adaptation of it. So, But I always liked the Trogs version. It was a really cool version. I think the best thing to, um, to note on that one was it was a very simple pattern, where this one's a little more complex. And it's definitely not the rap version. There was a rap version of Wild Thing that came out, um, I want to say, probably late 80s, early 90s. And this is not that song. This is just a little bit more like, you know, Wild Thing. I guess you could say it's almost like, because Hendrix, Jimi Hendrix, did this song as well. And it was an important one that he played. He played it really super slow, where the original song was a little bit faster. So let's uh, break this down. This is actually a song that plays in, it's got three different pages. The, the last song we just did uh, by the Kinks, uh, You Really Got Me, was only two pages. And again, you know, with those rests and everything and repeats, it's really important um, because otherwise if we didn't have those repeats on that, we probably would have had a three or four page uh, song to work on there. But they only, it broke down into two pages, so it was really a lot more simpler and easier to use, you know, when you're, when you're trying to read this instead of flipping the pages all the time. All right, so I've got Wild Thing here. Let's explain what's going on in the first half of this. Uh, this one's a little different. Now, this does do eighth notes on the hi-hat. We do play, you know, one and two and three and four and. But for the most part, the, the main beat out of this is just going to be quarter notes on the hi-hat. One, two three, four, okay? So I'm gonna start off the beat, and this is how it starts with the crash first. We're gonna add the bass with the crash. We're going to the beat, and then right away, the first measure, right after the, the very first measure, second measure is gonna be playing eighth notes, and then it goes right back to quarter notes again. So let's hear what this sounds like. I'm gonna play the first line out of Wild Thing. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. All right, let's try that one more time. One, two, ready, go. All right. So right now, um, the beat goes on basically the same way. It pretty much goes through until the third line. We're going to do actually a, a really cool fill. And it basically adds the eighth notes on the hi-hat. We're going to do a hi-hat opening. And then we're going to play the snare, tom, tom, tom. I'll play that measure for you right now. All right, so that's how that fill is going to go. And then the last line, we're going to start adding just bass drums. And this is where the, uh, the, the, uh, the singer basically starts singing to the song. And this is the first verse and second verse is going to be doing this. So it's going to start with a crash, and it's going to play some bass drums, and then we're going to go do some eighth notes between the toms and the snare, okay, or the floor tom and the snare. So let's try this out.
So as you can see, that's pretty much pretty easy to do. Not much to it, but let's try it once again. Just watch the bass drum and watch how the floor tom with the snare drum connects with the bass, okay? All right, now we move on to the next page. Uh, this is actually page six. And on page six, it's basically that same thing with the bass drum and the floor tom and the snare. And then we go into what they call like a little interlude. We play the, the regular quarter note hi-hat beat. And then we play that through another chorus. And so we do the chorus. When we get down to the bottom, this is on page six now, at the very bottom of it, it's going to do this really fancy, and I'm going to slow it down. It's, it's really kind of tricky for you to play it at the first time, but once you get the feel of how it goes, it's, it's a little more easier. So let's try this out. Um, first of all, it's got a beat, the regular quarter note beat. We're going to play that right now. And right here, we're going to use a floor tom. So we're going to hit that. Three snare drums. And then one high tom. We're going to rest for an eighth rest. And then hit an eighth note on the second tom. And then we're going to bring our right stick back to the snare drum. And we're going to play snare, high tom, floor tom. So, so the whole thing sounds like this. And then it crashes. We go back to the beat again. We play that whole quarter note hi-hat again with the main beat. All the way through up to where it says DSL Coda. And remember that DSL Coda means to look for that fancy S with the dots and the line. And you go back to that, which is at the very bottom of page five. And once we get there, we're going to play the same things we just went through, which is the snare and the floor tom with the bass. We go through that a few times, go back to the chorus, and then this time we're actually going to go right up to on page six, about uh, halfway down, you'll see it says to Coda. We're going to jump across to the next page on seven, and then where it says to Coda there, we're going to do that fill, and I'm going to go over that in just a minute, and then we play the last two lines, we play and one more time with the last two lines, and then we're done. But let's go over that right now. So we're, we're kind of getting to uh, right where it says coda, okay? So we're going to play eighth notes on the hi-hat this time. And that fill that I just showed you with the floor tom going to the, from the snare to the tom, it's going to do something very similar, but it's going to go crash, high tom, snare, snare, crash. It's the same rhythm, just a little different setup. And then we're going to build it up with the toms and the snare. And then we're going to play a real fun little fill, snare, snare, tom, 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 tom. And that's going to be 16th notes. Okay, let's break it down real slow. I'll play it. Here we go. That again so you can see how that goes. I'm going to keep it slow like I just did. I'll play it one more time. And that goes on for the next two uh, lines. The very last line, we're going to get to where it says double bar, double dot. We go back up again to the second line up from the bottom on page seven. It's going to say the outro chorus. We play that twice. So we're going to go to the double bar, double dot. We play that whole line again. We go down to the last line on page seven. And then right at the end of uh, the last measure of, of line on page seven, the last line, we're going to play the last measure, which is snare drum, floor tom, and bass all together 
twice. So it's gonna sound like this. And that's pretty much the song. All right, we're gonna play the whole song now without the music, and then I'll bring it up to speed, and then we'll play the whole song with the music. So let's start this off. Here we go. So that is Wild Thing. Uh, went through it all. If you have any questions about this, remember, don't feel, you know, you can you can actually uh, text me at joedrums1 uh, at comcast.net. You can always ask questions of, about anything I'm doing here. Um, and also, free, you're feel free to drop a line, too. It's, it's, it's important, you know, if I hear from you, I'll definitely uh, write you back, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and play this song, Wild Thing, uh, in its entirety with the song. Here we go.
All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, we talked about two different songs, one from the Kinks, one from the Trogs, and I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this. Uh, it's very, you know, fun to play the drums. Uh, if you're interested in taking drum lessons, I urge you to get some lessons. It's going to help you a lot. It helps you to practice. It gives you some format to follow, and so when you're at home practicing this stuff, uh, it actually helps you do things that you need to do eventually to get up and running and playing the drum set. And of course, playing with other musicians, that's what it's all about. So until then, you guys take care. If you guys, again, have any questions, feel free to drop me a line at joedrums1 at comcast.net. And I will see you on the next show. Until you guys uh, keep rocking, take care, and we'll see you on the next show. Have a good one.